Hi Pisces, I'm Leticia and I'm here with your reading, um, astrological and tarot reading for the second half of May 2019. And I apologize to you in advance, you may hear the traffic outside, I have the window open because I have incense burning and I want to make sure that I have the right ventilation. And um, But hopefully you will be able to hear me. So let's get started. So I'm going to start with the astrology first. And then um, in the second half, I will pull cards to see what spirit guides and the ancestors have to add to the reading today. So on the 15th of May, we have um, Venus moving into the sign of Taurus. So Uranus is already there. Um, the sun is there. Mercury is there. So then we will have Venus moving in and she is moving into her own sign. Okay. Because Venus rules Taurus and the sign of Libra. So when she moves here, for you, this is going to bless your communication. So you're, it's in your third house of so siblings and um, your communication, short distance travel. So Venus moving here for you is going to um, add the sweetness to your communication, how people communicate with you and how you communicate with others. Okay. She could also be there and someone just offer you a trip. You know, someone said, Hey, you want to, um, let's go on a road trip. Let's go, you know, go up to drive up to the mountains or let's just go to the beach you know a couple of towns over because it's short distance travel and then it adds the sweetness to your relationship with your siblings or the people in your community just people being kind to each other able to just eat together share laugh you know have a good time together venus adds this to you and then so we also have the moon in the sign of a Libra for you on the same day. So this is happening for you in your eighth house. So the eighth house has to do with resources, other people's money, your spouse's money, um, people who um, are your clients and occult knowledge, hidden things. So you have Libra there and then you have the uh, moon there so with the moon being here this is a sensitive place for the moon the eighth house because it can um stir up some fears okay because the eighth house is um about the deep dark things you know it, it has to do with death and it has to do with um again all of those things that are hidden you know that can be scary and so with the moon here you know it's it's a sensitive place where you may feel a little fright but because the moon is in the sign of Libra it adds this element of diplomacy there so as it relates to some of these hidden issues or relates to uh, other people's money or resources maybe there was some money that you should have there could be a nurturing mother figure there to help you get the funds that you have been looking for you may have fear about not receiving those resources but then there is a, a helping hand you know like i said uh, a woman who is there to help push the paperwork through so that you can get the loan so your tax money can come through this is something that you could see happening with that energy. Then on the uh, 16th, we have the we have Mars moving into the sign of Cancer. So for you, this is happening in your fifth house. So Cancer in your fifth house has to do with um, your children, and it has to do with um, it has to do with um, creativity so with Mars sitting in your fifth house then this is an opportunity for you to have these fantastic ideas you know come to the forefront you may be energetic about starting your new business um, you may find that your children are um, having there may be some issues with your children having some upsets you know some um, Enemies may come up that they are having arguments with. 
Um, but surely you'll be there with the wisdom as a Pisces, you know, with that kind healing water that you have to help calm the situation. And then again, we have all we have Venus and Taurus to help soothe this and then the moon in, in the sign of Libra to bring this diplomacy in. But as far as the creativity, this is an opportunity for you to push that forward. And as it relates to love relationships, with Mars rules sex. So you may have this powerful energy coming together for you to have these fantastic intimate connections with another, with Mars in your fifth house. All right. And then on the 18th, we have um, the full moon and the sign of Scorpio. So for you, this is happening in your ninth house. So Scorpio, the moon will be in Scorpio in your ninth house and the sun will be um, in your third house of so communications. They will both sit at 27 degrees and 27 in numerology, two plus seven equals nine. So this is an indication that this is definitely an energy of endings and separations. And so the full moon typically represents that anyway, when the moon is filled with light you know it has completed its cycle and is ready to shed this light so we could have issues um, or not issues but things coming to the light coming to understanding coming to visibility as it relates to legal issues from the ninth house rules that uh, legal issues that you may not have recognized and then they come to the forefront for you um, long distance travel, you may have been planning a trip abroad and then you find out something is not right with the paperwork, you know, something like that come to light for you. And then on the 21st, we have the sun and Mercury moving into the sign of Gemini. So for you, this is happening in your area of home, the fourth house, your area of home and, and the area of uh, your mother, um, the home where you live. So with Gemini here uh, and the sun and Mercury, so this is offering, you know, a time where there will be a lot more communication that is happening with your family members. Um, a lot more planning. Maybe you are making plans together. Maybe you are creating something together. Maybe even taking trips together because Gemini rules travel. So you may be planning some travel together, but there will be lots of heightened communication between you and your family members. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead, Pisces, and pull some cards for you. And we're asking the spirit guides and the ancestors to provide Pisces with more insight regarding the energies that are on offer for the second half of May. I'm using the African American Tarot deck. So there is definitely a lot of change happening for you Pisces as it relates to your communication because we have Uranus sitting there and the sign of Taurus. So if there have been, if you have been stuck with the way that you communicate, if your relationships with your siblings have been stuck and stagnant and not fresh, Uranus is coming in to shake that up and offering new types of communication, new ways of communication, even new travels. Because, you know, with um, Taurus on the third house, you know, you could just be stuck with not wanting to travel, wanting to just sit in the same place day after day, week after week, and being okay with that. Uranus comes in and all of a sudden you have new insight that you want to travel, that you want to market your business. So Uranus will give you bright and brilliant insights regarding how to market your business, when and where to market it, and to whom. Now with Mars coming into the fifth house, this is an opportunity for you to move forward with starting that business. Uranus being in your place of communication, um, the house of communication, this is giving you what to say, how to market it. Very beautiful.
I love how the energies all work together, you know, from one place to the next. You know, we're having a full moon, and then Uranus is doing what he's doing, and then Mars is doing what he's doing, and Gemini, you know, the sun and Gemini, and all of the energies, and the timing that is happening is absolutely perfect, and I love that. And Pisces, for you, you're such a spiritual um, sign, you know, the sign of spiritual healing. I had cards that came out, but they were too many that flipped over altogether. So I don't accept that. Probably like five cards that flipped together. So you have this, the Queen of Wands coming in. So this is an Aries sign, or Leo, or Sagittarius energy. So we'll see what else is added to that. But this is a fire energy, very strong energy. Could be male or female. Then the Seven of Wands, talking about fears, talking about fighting back. Talking about not allowing other people to make you afraid, but you stand your ground in what it is that you believe. You stand your ground in what it is that you believe, and that's absolutely what the Queen of Wands is all about. She will not be bullied. She will not be bullied. She will not be told which way to go. She will not be told what to do. She is a force to be reckoned with. And in this season, you definitely are a force to be reckoned with. So this is somebody else that is around you. This... Um, she is around you and indeed trying to push her way onto you and her ideas and her wishes onto you, dear Pisces. So this is, and it could be male or female, but this energy I feel like it's a female coming through, trying to dictate to you how you should live your life, what you should do. And you are standing your ground because you are tired of her manipulation and her trying to dictate to you what is the best way for you to go. So she could be a Leo, Aries, or a Sagittarius. She doesn't have to be. She can just have that energy, that forceful, powerful um, energy. And so you feel that you have made investments in this uh, relationship with this Queen of Wands type person, but they have not yielded you the fruit that you want. It's been a partial, partial success that you have had. But in that, you have come to a rest in your emotions and your mind at one point. Your emotions were all over the place regarding her, but you have separated your emotions from her and are not being moved by what she has going on and what it is that she is saying. You separated from it. I want to see what else uh, Spirit has to say regarding this relationship with this fiery queen of wands. And you used to fear having her upset or losing her, but no more. 
Keep her good. And with fire, a message of fire, with the page of wands, a message of fire with boldness in your speech and your actions, you stand your ground. Regarding this. Queen of Wands. Let's see what else is going to happen with this character. I had some cards to fall. But the three of, three of Pentacles is out. So you have new skills that you have developed. New skills that you have developed. And though new skills you have developed, and though she is this fiery queen of wands who is something to be reckoned with, you are the emperor of your own kingdom, of your own life. And you've developed this amount of strength and your to be able to withstand this Queen of Wands as you are determined to lead and rule your own life and your own directions and what it is that you want to do. You've invested too much and it has not yielded you what it is that you would like. You are standing up for yourself. You are standing up for yourself. Quickly. Hmm. The five of wands is out. The eight of wands is out. So, the eight of wands... So you're standing up for yourself, but something is happening with the Five of Wands, which is showing that some there is a mask. Let's see what else is happening. There is a mask that you are wearing, Pisces, as it relates to this Queen of Wands, though you are standing strong and being the emperor there is this eight of wands that is here hmm change is here change moving is here so let us see So you are moving, she is moving, this Queen of Wands is moving, all eyes are watching, all eyes are watching this move as it takes place, everybody's looking from the outside to see what's going to happen, as this Queen of Wands is moving. It's a quick and a sudden change. Everyone is looking from the outside, but you are looking inside. You are looking within yourself to see 
how you feel about the situation. She is moving away from you stood your ground. You have said, no, this is what I will do. This is what I will not do. So she is moving away from trying to control you and manipulate you. And as all eyes are watching, and then ultimately you are celebrating. They are celebrating. There is an ease of emotion, a celebration of emotion, because you have held your ground. You stayed your course. You've not been manipulated. You have taken care of yourself. I'm trying to get this light right. Taking care of yourself. Protected your kingdom. And then there is a swift change. Masks, masks are off. Masks are off. So we have this. Five of Wands. We have this moving away. Six of Swords. We have her moving away from trying to do all of the manipulation and tricks. And then you are looking within yourself. As everyone else is looking on the outside at the situation, but there is a celebration, an emotional celebration. All the way around. Things settle. All right. And I'm going to, that was really long, but I wanted to see <laughs> what the outcome was on that. And so I'm going to pull the Oracle card for you, Pisces. what it is the spirit has to say overarching oracle this is the um, mystical shaman oracle card deck ancestors and spirit guides speak to Pisces for the second half of March 20 I'm sorry second half of May 2019 Mm. The counsel. You take counsel with yourself and spirit and the ancestors and make your decision. You see, the eyes are closed. So it's not asking people, what do you think I should do? What do you feel I should do? No. Within yourself. And then it's the number 11, which is a portal to spirit. So to spirit you go in meditation. How you listen to your heart. She has her hand over her heart. She counsels with her heart, with her own self, and makes the decision on what to do in the scenario. And that's what you do, dear Pisces, the second half of May. I thank you so much for listening. Again, I'm Letitia, and you can find any information you need for me below. Thank you.